let's do another one. Why not? Okay, so um, <clears throat> you're going to go to a Ford dealership to buy a new Ford Escape. Now, I've simplified this significantly, but it was inspired because I was shopping for a Ford Escape. Um, you were greeted with the following options. If you choose cloth seats, then you can choose between the colors of black, tan, uh, black and tan. Uh, then you can choose if you would like a standard radio or one with GPS in it. And then finally, there you have a hybrid engine, a four-cylinder engine, or a six-cylinder cylinder engine. All right. Now, but that's only if you want cloth seats. If you want to choose leather seats, leather seats, then you can choose between black, brown, and tan. Uh, then the rest of it pretty much stayed the same because then you you would have the standard radio or GPS and then finally um, you have the hybrid engine four-cylinder or six-cylinder engine okay so the question is is how many different ways are there to make a Ford Escape how many different possible Ford Escapes are there give it a try pause the video see see what you can come up with this is different this one's different all right give it a shot Okay, so assuming you have tried the problem, um, hopefully what you came up with was decisions and choices, right? And there's lots of ways of doing this, but I'm just going to show you one way just to kind of open up your mind to a new way of looking at these problems. What you may have noticed was we had one set of options when we had cloth seats, and then we had another set of options when we had leather seats, right? Now, so when I had cloth, I had how many choices to make? Well, I had the color of the seats. I had a, uh, a decision of color of the seat, then I have a decision of the radio, and then I had a decision related to the engine, right? Okay, with the leather, I had very similar things, same thing, color, radio, engine, same idea. Now, how many choices do I have for each? Well, with the cloth seats, I only had two choices of color, then I had two choices of radio, and three choices for the engine. And that was not exactly the same for the leather seats. For the leather seats, I had three choices in color, two, two radio, three engine. And so what we could do is we've created two separate little problems. We could figure out, okay, if I do a cloth car, I have two times two is four. There are times three is 12. So I have a total of 12 different types of Ford Escapes that can be made using cloth seats. And then using the leather seats, three times six, Oh, sorry, three times two makes six, six times three is 18. So there are 18 different choices with leather. Uh, leather with an H, not letter or whatever that would be, leather. Okay, much better. Now, the question is, how do these things go together? And logic will get you there. Logic gets you there. Um, but if you really want to apply the addition or multiplication principle, you just say to yourself, is this a decision? with the number of choices and a decision with the number of choices and then those are going to go together to make one final product. So do I choose my cloth, then my leather, and put them into one car? No! So that's not multiplication principle. That is not decisions and choices. I have one decision to make. What is my decision? What car do I want to buy? How many choices do I have? 12 of that kind, 18 of this kind, whoops. So that would be adding. So there are a total of 30 different options. Okay, one more, one more quick little example. Uh, that was cars. This one is um, uh, test takers. And there's some tests that are structured in a way such that you don't have to do every problem on the test. You choose categories. Um, so this one is saying you're taking a test that has three sections. The first section is named A, then B, then C. Okay, section A has four true or false questions. So you could think of this... Um, uh, well, so far, well, true, true or false. All right, whatever. We'll get back to that. Section B has four multiple choice problems, uh, each of which has five answers to choose from. So what I mean is, uh, like Scantron, A, B, C, D, or E. Choose which one. Section C has less problem. This has three multiple choice problems, but each of them has six answers. So there's less to do, but there are more options. A, B, C, D, E. E and F, right? So how many different answer sheets could there be? So when I say that, think of like Scantrons. Um, how many different answer sheets can be made if the students must do, must do section A? They have to take section A, but then they do B or C, B or C, but not both. So a student would do, like, so for example, a student could do section A, 
or B or A or C, right? A, they all have to do A though, okay? So think about how many different ways, uh, there, how many different answer sheets there could be. And think of it like as a Scantron where you have problem number one and they would fill out true or false then problem number two, true or false, problem number three, true or false. And they would just go through this answer sheet um, and they would just fill in either the first, you know, what was it? Three, uh, sorry, four true falses. So four true falses. Then they just either they would fill in the next four numbers. So they do five, six, seven, and eight, or they would do the next three numbers, just five, six, and seven, uh, depending. And then they would fill in the appropriate little bubble uh, corresponding to the letter that they chose. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Give it a pause, see what you can come up with. And here we go. All right, so decisions and choices. If you think of it as decisions and choices, it usually falls out pretty much easier. So if you were a student taking a test, the first decision you have to make is, I have to do problem number one. Problem number one, how many choices do I have? Two, it's either true or false. Problem number two, two choices. Problem number three, two choices. Problem number four, two choices. Those are, this is all section A. That is the true false part, right? Now, the students who choose section B will now have four more decisions to make, right? They have four more. And so problem five, six, seven, and eight, in there, right? Now, maybe I'll make these problems sub one, piece of two, piece of three, piece of four. So that way it doesn't look like they're like multiplying. So problem five, how many choices do I have for problem five? Well, if they're doing section B, they have five different answers to choose from. So five choices. And then similarly, five, five and five. Right? Um, so this would be, this would be the number of ways to uh, have answer blanks if a student chose to do section A, then B. So let's see, what would that be? Two to the fourth times five to the fourth. But what about those group of students who didn't do A and B? What about those groups of students? Well, everybody has to do A, right? So this part is going to look the same. But for then for problem five, problem six, and problem seven, they don't have the same four choices. Now they have, or sorry, they don't, not four. They don't have five answers, five choices. They have six. Okay. So therefore, what we're going to do here is fill in 6, 6, and 6. So therefore, this would be, what, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, so that's 2 to the 4th, 6 to the 3rd. Okay, let's uh, get some numbers here. There we go. So I'm showing that we have 10,000 different answer sheets possible if um, a student does A, then B, and we have 3,456 different options if a student does a then C. So again, how do these go together? Well, it's, you don't get to do A then B and A then C, then put those together to make one test. No, no, no. You have this or the other one. You're there. So therefore, they are going to add. Uh, you either do A then B or A then C. So therefore, that is 13,456 different test blanks, that, uh, different test sheets that are possible. Okay. Um, so thus concludes our section on uh, add an addition and subtraction, or sorry, addition and multiplication principle. Uh, good luck on the homework.